Hallelujah to the living God. Yes. Yes, my Lord. We say yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We rejoice in your presence, my God. We glorify you, Father God, for you alone are holy and holy and worthy to be praised, my Lord. We thank you, Father God. We celebrate life today, my Lord. We celebrate family today, my Lord. We celebrate change today, my Lord. A change has come. <laughs> A change has come. Yes, Lord, we thank you for change. We thank you for lives being re-restored. We thank you for new beginnings, Father God. We thank you for a fresh anointing, my Lord. We bless you and we praise you, Father God. We thank you for helping us, teaching us how to be the men that we're called to be, Father God. Helping and instructing us on how to be the husbands that we have been designed to be, my Lord. I bless you, Father God. We will be the neighbors that we're called to be in the name of Jesus. We will be the political leaders that we're called to be in the name of Jesus. And we will be the friends of those of the friendless, Father God. We will love you, Father God. And we will see people in your eyes, my Lord. We will see them just as you see them, Father God. Filled with compassion in our heart and our souls. Desiring the same change in their life, my Lord. Desiring the same change, Father God. That they too, the hurting, the broken, and lost, can encounter the living God. That they can encounter the living God. The living God who never gives up on us. The God who never quits. The Father, the Lord who never slumbers. He never rests. He never slumbers. He's always there. He's always there to call upon. Woo! My God. And they keep coming in. Come on in, families. Come on in. We're going to celebrate this morning. We're going to celebrate the living God. It's Sunday. We're in the city of Santa Ana. Santa Ana, we're live. Turning Point Fellowship, we're live on YouTube. We're live in Facebook land. And we say, come on out. You're invited. Come on out to the house of God as we celebrate our king, the king of kings, the one that set us free. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. We say, come on out. We would love to get to know you. Come on out, community. Come on out and join us as we celebrate the living God, as we celebrate one another as family. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has done an incredible thing in the men's lives this weekend. For those of you on Facebook and YouTube world, we just came back from the mountaintop. We just set ourselves apart to get with the almighty God. Because we always need direction. <laughs> and sometimes we have to set ourselves apart. And we did that this week. And we had the opportunity, sisters. We had an opportunity to set ourselves apart. And we thank you. We thank you, sisters, that stepped up, that prayed for us, that interceded for us, that believed God for us. That you do it every day. But I know this weekend even more so. Because we felt it. The Lord embraced us. Each and every one of us. Individually. And on a whole. And we welcome you. Everybody here to the house of God this morning. And I just can't. I just have to say thank you. <laughs> thank you to my God. I'm just so excited about what God has done. I'm so excited about just spending more time with my brothers, with the body of Christ. We don't always get that time. We see each other coming and going. There was a few brothers that were up there, and, and, and they said, we'll be back next year. And I said, okay, that's exciting, yes. That's exciting, right? Very exciting. But why do we have to wait another year? 
Why do we have to wait another year to embrace our family? To fellowship with family? To break bread with family? We don't do this thing one time a year for three days. Come on. No, that was setting ourselves apart so we could get direct connect. We have it here. Don't get me wrong. But we had to leave social media alone. We had to leave social media alone. Huh? We didn't have time for Facebook, YouTube, and all that. No, it was us and the Father. He had some things that he wanted to get to us so that he could give it through us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? You brothers have lit me up. The Holy Spirit has done a new thing. But I want you men to know, you men that are standing here before us today, steadfast, strong and of good courage, that's what you are. Men of a higher standard. Men that said enough is enough. I'm taking my rightful place and I'm not looking back. I'm going forward in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going forward in the mighty name of Jesus. It's not about me no more. It's about the Christ who lives in me. And I have to have a seat. I need to take my seat so that he can do what he needs to do. Amen? I'm so excited. I am not ministering today. I just want to say good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of God. Welcome to the house of God. Let's pray. Father, I bless you and I praise you, Father. <laughs> Your love is so real and so rich, Father. Just as your word says, it's not easy to contain. It just pours out, Father. Lord, I thank you for having your way in this service today, Father God. Right here in this house of God, I thank you for inviting us into your presence. And I thank you for having your way in this service, my Lord. Have your way in our hearts in our minds, and in our souls, my God. Lord, I ask that you help us to put yesterday behind us. That as we are here today in your presence, Father God, we're going to listen. We're going to be slow to speak and quick to listen, my Lord. Because we know that there's an overflow. There's an overflow that's about to hit this house of God. We know that there's more for us, Lord, and we are excited, Father. We're excited for what we're going to learn today. <laughs> we're like a children in a candy shop with you, my God. You know, there's so much to choose from, but we don't have to choose. You show us the way, Father God. You are the way maker, Father. And we thank you for directing our path, and we thank you for going before us, my Lord. Have your way amongst your sons and your daughters today. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you guys excited? Are you guys excited? I just want to share something with you guys. Something happened in the mountain. Yeah, that's right. Something happened. We call it Stonewall. Somebody give me Stonewall. Oh, that means we come together. When the men came together, we were scattered just the way you see right now. Something happened. Some, there was a shift. And I want to invite you, everybody, listen up, listen up. You, you're sitting out in the back. You're sitting out scattered. I want to invite you. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Jump in this river. Jump in this river. Jump in this river in the name of Jesus. Come on. Let's worship. Hallelujah. All together, come on. It's 
It's overflowing from the heart of God. The flood of heaven crashing over us this night is rising, rising. Bursting, bursting all on the ground. We feel it now. Don't stop. Come on. Judah, hail, hail to the line of Judah. 
You know, a week ago, you prayed for this. Hallelujah. Two months ago, you prayed for this miracle, and now it's happening in front of your eyes. So I just want to encourage you. 
Jump in with them. Come on, that's right. The husband is the head of the house. It starts at the top. So if he's on fire, the fire is going to continue to go down. Oh, that's right. The husband, that's right. the wife, yep. the children. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's Come right. on, wife. Right. If your husband's up here, wife, and you're not up here. Come on, I want to encourage you. You trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. You're not trusting in the man. It's not the man you're putting your trust in. It's God. Bring it in, bring it in so more people can come up. Stone wall, stone wall, come on. Bring it in. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. We can be saved. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. We can be saved. Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the blood of Jesus. We can be saved. Only by the blood of Jes
only by the blood of Jesus we can be saved. The veil has been torn. The veil has been torn. The curse is broken. The veil has been torn. The veil has been torn. The curse is broken. The veil has been torn. The veil has been torn. The curse is broken. How many you believe that? somebody next to you. That's why you're here.
put my trust in you. I won't be shaken. Come on, shake it. I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. I put my trust in you. I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. I put my trust in you. Trust in you. We put our trust in you. We put our
hands, lift up your hands. Holy, 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 you are holy, 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 you are holy, holy, there it is, holy, 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 you are worthy. Breathe upon your people, Lord. Here we are, Lord. Here I am, Lord. The king is in the room. The king is in the room.
king is in the room, family. Just close your eyes. You don't need, you don't need someone to touch you or give you a word. You have a direct line to the king himself. Amen. A direct line. The veil has been torn. The curse is broken. And since the curse is broken, you have access. So access them. Father, we thank you for each and every soul in this place, Father God. We thank you for their lives, Father. We thank you for their obedience to come up, Father, and receive a touch from you. Father, we, I pray, Father, that the fruit we see here would remain, Father God, and that we would not be fire extinguishers, putting out the fires of the man next to you, of the woman next to you, that we would not put out the fire. <laughs> He'll give you as much as you want. He'll give you as much as you want. Don't put out the fire. Don't put out the fire. So, Father, we bless you, Father God, here today. Father, we thank you for the miracles that have taken place, Father, over the course of this weekend, Father God. And we will continue to thank you for the miracles that are to come, Father God, for the testimonies that would come forth, Father God, about how lives have changed, Father God. Generations have been changed through the obedience of your men, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for each and every life, each and every family represented here, Father God. We bless you and we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Take your seats, family. In the presence of your father, the king is here. Amen. Thank you, I don't know what to do, you guys. It's going to... Uh, uh, I like to, we're going to receive our tithe and offering right now. I would like you to go ahead and raise your hand if you would like a tithe and envelope. And even if you don't, I'm going to believe by faith that you're going to give in Jesus' name. Amen. So go ahead and raise your hands, family, for a tithing envelope. Come on, let me see them. Let me see them. Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Blake, for being obedient. Jesus' name. So I like, I like to share something that I received up, at the, up in the mountain, a revelation. And uh, I believe it's for each and every one of us. So the revelation, what was spoken was about the chil children of Israel. We got someone up here. Thank you. The children of Israel were in Egypt. They came out of Egypt. They wandered through the wilderness for 40 years when it was only a two-week journey. Right? And, a lot of, and only their children got to see the promised land. So what the pastor said was, why, are we, why do we keep going back to Egypt? If we're in the promised land over here, why do we keep going back to Egypt? Now, the revelation I got, because I'm a blessed man up here. I'm going to tell you I'm a blessed man. You want to know why? Because from my oldest son, Ivan over there, he went through the nursery at Turning Point Fellowship. And I don't know what grade class he's in now, but he's still in this church. So my son never got to see Egypt. My son was born in the promised land. My son would never went through the wilderness, no. My son was born in the land of milk and honey, family. So this is the revelation the Lord spoke to me. Every time you decide to go backwards, whether it's in your actions, your thoughts, your deeds, whatever it is that causes you to go back to Egypt, you know what I'm doing? You know what you're doing? You're getting your kids that are in the promised land and you're bringing them to Egypt, a place they were never meant to be, family. So I want to speak that into your life. If your children were born and raised in the land of milk and honey, don't take them to a place they ain't supposed to be. Amen. You were, you were raised up out of there for a reason. 
And now those children that were raised in the land of milk and honey, if we continue to cultivate them and raise them up in the Lord, they're going to change a generation and change the world in Jesus' name. But you got to believe it. Amen. So I know that's not really a tithing and an offering thing, but I had to share that with you guys because I believe it's for each and every one of us if we take hold of that. Amen. So now, if you didn't bring any cash or a check, amen, we can go ahead and text the word GIVE to 714-477-7736. Amen. GIVE in Jesus' name. Here we go.
Father, we thank you, Father. We praise you. We can't praise you enough, Father mm -hmm. God, for what you're doing here, Father. Father, we lift these tithes, these offerings up to you, Father God, and have your way, Father. Give discernment, wisdom to those who will allocate them, Father, to where they must go, Father God, to further your kingdom, Father. Yeah. And we just thank you, Father, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause to our worship team, please. All this is is overflow. This is overflow of the mountain. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you ladies. I'm going to challenge you women. Hold us accountable. Hold us accountable. If we're acting out of line, tell us. That ain't kingdom. That ain't kingdom. Amen. Hold me accountable. Baby, honey. So basically, I'm, I'm supposed to do announcements. Go ahead and be seated. I'm sorry. Children, everybody, we're staying in. Amen. So what we're going to do is, and what we, what we usually do, is we invite uh, brothers up for um, what is it? testimonies. Brother Bert will come up and he'll do that. So that's going to take place. I just want to let you guys know. But we also want to remind you, November 24th, which is a Thursday, there will be no service. We want you guys to go and spend that time with your family, amen, which is Thanksgiving. Spend Thanksgiving with your family. And if you have the opportunity, pray for the meal, amen. Pray for one of your family members. If you're around family that don't know Jesus, share the love of God, amen. So we just want to encourage you in that, amen. All right, Brother Bert. Yep, praise the Lord. Got him. Got him. <laughs> All right, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you what, uh, women, it's, uh, it's like Brother Tomas was saying, and I think you can just feel it in the air, God's presence and what he's done and stuff and whatnot, you know. The thing we need to remember, we remind each other that, you know what, we don't have to go to the mountain because God is omnipresent. And as Sister Cecilia told us the other day, we can just go in our little closet face. We can go in our work, wherever we're at, because he's there with you. But, you know, but there's something about going to the mountain, and there's something about getting away with 88, 88, 88 men, and I'm talking men. Come on, give my hand, bro. You know what? There's just, there's just something about that, you know, and in separating one, going to the mountain, and like I said, being with 88 men and finding out that we're all the same. We've all got issues. We're all vulnerable. We all cry. I know we cry. <laughs> but that's a good thing, you know what? That's a good thing. And, and I would just, uh, we would just encourage those that maybe couldn't make it this year, start working on that. Start working on that. Uh, and as the men come up and, uh, and, and testify, you guys were here, the amazing work that God is doing in your men, in your husbands, in your sons, in your nephews, whoever it might be. Because I tell you what, God, God is good. God is good. So with any, uh, without further ado, what we're going to do, uh, what do you have? What do you need? This? Yeah. Okay. We're going to give uh, uh, the individuals three minutes, uh, and we just kind of need to make it clear. Uh, we're not up here to preach. We're not up here to talk about what Brother So-and-so received, what Brother Sancho received. Well, you know, we're not here to talk about that. You're here to talk about and speak about, rather, excuse me, speak about your experience, what God did for you. Maybe God gave you revelation. Maybe he took something away from you. Uh, maybe he answered a special prayer that you might have had, you know, giving you a miracle. Whatever it was that he did for you, okay? So we're going to give you three minutes, and you guys will hear the, the little music that you're getting, you're getting there, okay? Uh, and I know that we all want to, would love to testify, love to speak. Uh, stuff and I, but, you know, we need to, <clears throat> we just need to, you know, hold each other accountable that way. And uh, so, like I said, it's got to be ABC. It's accurate, brief, and Christ-centered, okay? It's not, you know, that I was up there and I was laying hands on brothers and I was speaking to this brother and I give this brother. No, 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 no. What did God do for you? Okay? All right? So let's just keep it that way. And we'd like to do is, like, have the man just go ahead and come on up and line up. 
Yeah, don't everybody rush at once. But, you know, there we go. There's Brother Juan right there. Come on, brother. Let's go. I thought it was on already. Um, I want to, I just want to say that I, I, I went up to the mountain with a heavy heart. I went to the mountain three days before making a mistake. I want to apologize to the Lord first and foremost. But most of all, I want to apologize to my wife. Amen. I'm sorry. I apologize and I ask that you forgive me. I want to apologize to my kids, to all of you. I spoke a word over my family and my wife that I shouldn't have. I went to the mountain with that heavy heart and that mistake that I made. And I come before the Lord right now and I just repent. I repent in front of my church family. Amen. That's all I got. I love you guys. I'm Ted Summers. I went up to the mountain this time. It was my first time. I was kind of skeptical at first. <laughs> but um, I kind of think I was set up between my wife and Bobby Joe. So, you know, but we won't, we'll just leave it at that. Um, I don't regret it. I went up there expecting because um, Leonard had asked me, what do you expect from going up to the mountain? And I told him I expect to get some compassion for people. Because of all the situations that I've been through, I don't have compassion for a lot of people, and I don't feel sorry for people. And I wanted to have that love like all the brothers have here. Because ever since I came here to Turning Point Fellowship, all they ever did was welcome me, give me hugs. I pulled away like, what? Don't hug me. You know what I mean? And then one time, Brother Andy, I didn't want to say no names, but gives me a kiss on my cheek. And I was like, so I told my wife when we went home, I don't like that. You know? That's not me. You know? And my wife's all, but he's not doing it in a perverted way. I go, I know, but it's just not me. And I just wanted to feel how they feel towards every, each other. And, um, and you know what? I left a lot of things up there. I left anger, irritation, frustration, stress, animosity. And uh, unforgiveness was the big one because I couldn't forgive people for what they've done to me. And you know what? I left that all up there. And on Sunday... I finally went to the altar on Sunday because I was still being hard-headed. And I felt so empty, like everything, like nothing was holding me down. I'm not a 400-pound guy that day, you know, today. I feel light. And, uh, and I think I'm, I wanted that new heart, and I think I might have got it. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, yeah, one more thing, one more. One more thing real quick. It was a funny thing because I ended up in the wisdom dorm, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and you know what? That was the most great experience in my life that I've had. Besides any other thing that I've been through in my life, because I got to sit up late with this big old giant loving man, Ralph DeLeon, right? <laughs> that has so much love and compassion for people that that rubbed off on me. Yeah. Sitting up with Brother Burke. And just getting all this wisdom from Brother Bert. Brother Andy, 
throwing his little comments in there, little jokes and stuff, and then being serious about things that need to be serious about. Pastor Al showed up speaking into my life. Uh, Brother Leonard talking to me about scripture after scripture after scripture and teaching me because I don't really know about scripture. So he was showing me a lot of things. But that was just the best spot for me was in Condo One. And my brother right here, for some reason, always showing up. I walk out of uh, one of the condos at 1145 to go back and go to sleep. I hear a noise behind me. I'm like, it's Tomas. I thought it was a bear, but it was Tomas. I love you, brother. I love you guys. How you guys doing? Um, my name is Ryan Grajeda, and for my testimony, I was invited by my brother Raymond, but that would be the hundredth time he invited me, and I kept saying no, no because of this or no because of that, and I've always had Christ in my life, but I've been hurt for so long and had a broken heart. So I kept putting cement, that put cement over my heart. And um, I rebelled against God. Just, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to go to you anymore. But I've, I got tired of that weight. It got heavy on my heart, heavy and heavy. And um, God was telling me it's time to get up and go forward. Not just for me. Because I'm not going to be here forever. And the people who weren't my example, I can be that, that example. And um, I just want to thank, I, kind of, I want to apologize to some of the brothers if they see me and I look like I was distant or might have gave them a look that they thought I was judging them or whatever. But we all, we're all human. We all have hearts. And um, I just want to be a better man in Christ um, for for my family, and um, and 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 for friends and for people who are hurting out there in the in the world. And so uh, I laid all that heaviness. You know, there's still a little bit. You know, there I got to shake it off. You know, but but um, on the way down the mountain, I was feeling great. But once I kept getting lower and lower and lower, the enemy was getting trying to creep back in, trying to creep back in. And I said, I'm not going to have it. Because what I learned was we got four more downs. Stone wall. And I'm not, I'm not going to be boastful about, you know, I don't want to be boastful in this, you know what I mean? I just want to humbly come to the Lord and say, um, I'm opening, I'm coming back to my first love, which is him. So with a humble heart, I want to say thanks to Jesus. Thank you to my family and for all the brothers and sisters here. Thank you for letting me share. And, Everybody's going to um, stay there and, and start fresh. And I come down and the pilot light, like Pastor Angel says, don't let it shrink. And I have in the past, and I promise this year I was prayed over it, but make sure that I'm going to be the husband. I've been a fool. My wife, yeah. my kids, and I want you to, 
I want to apologize. But the Lord said it's going to be a new start. Okay. And I want to I want to apologize to you because I love you. I'm going to be the Christian man that I'm going to want me to supposed to be, Lord. Steadfast. I, I just, I just want to say real quick. This is, this is why we go up there. This is why we go up there. You know, what? because they're, like I said, men are self. We're selfish. I, I'm the first one raising my hand. We're selfish, and we do things, and sometimes we don't even think about what we do or what we say, and we need to ask for forgiveness. You know. I said, we don't need to go to the mountain because it's something that's here right now. But you know what? Like you said, don't let that pilot let burn out. Okay? Keep it going. Power of an invite. A hundred times. But the power of an invite. You know There's a lot to be learned here. I, I would like to share a, a testimony. You guys are asking for testimonies. My testimony didn't start at the mountain. My testimony started the day I was dropped off at Turning Point as head of household. I was a man of the house. I was dropped here at Turning Point because I couldn't do it on my own. I needed, I needed help from my father. I couldn't do it on my own. I was, my family's falling apart. So I come here. I see you guys with your loving family. Just take care of your wives because it's hard. Testimony to me. I well, seen a brother hurt last week because he didn't think he was going to make the mountain. He's all, pray for me, brothers. Pray for me, brothers. And we pray for him. I show up Friday. He's hanging out. He's hanging out the window like Willy Wonka with the golden ticket. I'm here. I made it. I made it. Excited. That's testimony. That's family. Turning point. Testimony's going up. I can't ever hear that song, oh, oh, without a twitch. <laughs> Testimony was, a year ago, they shared with me, God is my co-pilot. God's always sitting shotgun. I'm in my truck. News of we're going to the mountains comes to me. And what happens? I hear, invite. Invite. Or you take. Do what it takes to invite. People need to hear this. Don't be selfish. Share. Share the word of God. Share what, what the men of a higher standard has to share. Show. That's what I got. Do what you got to do, Renee. You got family and you got people that need to go out there with you. Amen. Testimony. It's like when there's a party, you're inviting everybody. Let's go get drunk. Woo. Saturday, we got drunk. Off the Lord. People were dropping like flies. Hallelujah. The, the presence of the Lord. We were so drunk, brother. Where's he at? Brother Ryan was stumbling. Thank you, Father. When I, oh, my. Yes, family. I'll tell you what. <laughs> The, the, bro the brother was right on, because I know, I know I was drunk in the Holy Ghost. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. And, I mean, we had an awesome lineup. We had an awesome lineup. And when, when Brother Andy showed me that lineup, I said, oh, Lord, I can't wait. Really, I can't wait. We had some awesome speakers up there, and they shared, and they shared exactly what we needed. If you went up expecting, you received there's no doubt about it. But he's right. We were, I don't say we because I dropped too, but we were dropping like flies, like the brother said. There ain't no doubt about it. Hello, family. My name is Ozzy, and uh, I went up to the mountains asking for forgiveness. Uh, I got a beautiful wife, and uh, sometimes we act up the way we shouldn't. 
Um, I, I went up there expecting a lot of change. And I, when I come home, I, wanna, I, I just want to be a different man. I want to thank all of you men for going up there. It was awesome. And uh, Pastor Angel, we love you. We miss you. Thank you, guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, my name is Tino. Um, it's like fourth or fifth time I've been into the mountain. I went up there um, ready to receive, but not sure what to expect to receive. I don't know if that makes sense, but I can I can tell you what I received and what I came back with. I came back so many hugs, so much love. I came back fat, faithful. I came back faithful, um, available, and teachable. You know what I mean? And just, just when I thought it couldn't get any better than this weekend, my lovely wife came up here to the altar with me today to praise. Thank you, babe. Thank you. That's all I got. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Uh. Uh, in this case, my, my gut is heavy, very heavy. I don't know why. But I feel like it's a calling from God, like he wants me to do something with him relating to church. And um, a long time ago, I took a course that, that, taught, that told me that I was meant to be a teacher in something that was called um, uh, get rich doing something you loved. You know, At the time, I was far from God. But it said that I, I was meant to be like a teacher or something, maybe one day. It's teaching the word of God to the, the, the future people. I got that from that, kind of. And uh, also that um, we must be steadfast when temptation comes around the corner and turn the other cheek and remember and say it to yourself, steadfast. And um, thank you for all the love and hug and support from everyone. Very welcoming. Uh, therefore, you know, I am who you see of what I've become now, because if I didn't feel comfortable enough to let myself go like that far to really get the most out of the experience, then I really wouldn't have been able to be where I am right now with this uh, new changed self. Thank you. I'll tell you what, that, uh, that brother came a long way from uh, when he first got there on Friday, but a lot of us did when we first got there on Friday. And uh, between Friday and Sunday, new creations in Christ. Brother Andy kept calling it out all week, something new, something new. This whole, this whole thing is just, it, it's something new. It's something that we really hadn't had. And I told him, I said, you know what? I mean, I've been going up there for 19 years. I said, but this year, there was just something. There was something. And you know what? And uh, it's just the word of God was just beautiful. And like the brother said, we uh, kind of overeat sometimes, you know. But, but we got fed spiritually with an overflow, right? <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. Um, even if I can't, I still thank the Lord. Even if I'm not able to. And um, what I got from there, it's, I, I know it's right, but... Um, I thank the Lord I, that I have hands, you know. In my arms, I can lift to the Lord and praise the Lord and thank him. And then I got two feet. You know, I can dance. I can dance. And I got my knees. And I can bow down to the Lord. And I just praise, I just thank, thank the Lord that I'm able to do it. And while I, while I can, I will do that. Because we're, we're to praise the Lord. And that's, uh, that's what I got. Um, another thing is um, that all of us, all of us here, we're all leaders, and we all have Christ in us. We're solid, and we we form a we form a stone wall, you know. <clears throat> and um, everybody that, if we call this our church, we we need to, we need to uh, we need to be in it. We need to serve the Lord, and we need to. Um, we need to get connected and get grounded with our ministries. We, we need this church to grow. And in order how 
we're going to grow is if we all participate. So we come here, we call this our church. Pastor Angel is our, our, our pastor. You know, we're here to serve the Lord, and we, we, need a, we, need a, we need to get grounded in our ministries. Just check out with our leaders and see what we can do to help out. And um, that's how we're going to get stronger and bring more people in and, and serve the Lord and be disciples and uh, preach the word. And that's how we're going to get the word, of, the word of Christ to the world. Um, and uh, I thank the Lord uh, one more other thing. Because, um, yeah, cause, uh, yeah we're, we're, not, we're not done yet. And, you know, about that four downs, we still have four more downs. We still, we st- you know, our story is not done yet. And we have to stay steadfast. In the Lord. Amen. So if you're thinking in your head, singing, and you don't speak it, or if you're seeing yourself in the head, and you're like jumping and shouting, you know, and you're not doing it, it's time. It's time. Jump. You know, and it's not for a show for anybody. It's because we're praising the Lord. And that's what it's about. We're here to praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I, I, I got to say something on that one, man. Now, I tell you what, Brother, Brother Danny, since he started going up to that mountain, and I remember that when, when, he, when he went and he, he took that step of faith, and he ain't never been the same. He ain't never been the same. Because this brother, he was just, I'll use the word introvert. He was just quiet to himself. He didn't say much. I mean, didn't say much if he said anything. And now, as you can see, what the Lord has done is just given, huh? Because that, that's all God right there. That's all God. Thank you, Brother Dan. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. First and foremost, uh, I want to thank uh, our Lord and Savior, you know, Jesus Christ. Uh, and um, my name is Jesus Sanchez. <clears throat> I wasn't really... Uh, uh, I didn't really know what to expect going up there. And I want to thank all the brothers. You know, like you guys mentioned, there is power in the word of invite. I was still trying to make excuses to probably the last fourth day before going over there because I wasn't sure of myself uh, mainly. But I want to thank Brother Ryan, you know, you know Brother Thomas, every single brother here that, that, that asked me if I was going because that was just an extra little push for me to, to, to you know, it, that, that's an obvious sign that God wanted me to go. You know what I mean? And I went up there with, with, with a heavy heart, with a shameful heart, you know, guilt, you know. And, and uh, <clears throat> well, that, that's, me, that's one of the main reasons, you know. And, and uh, you know, guilt for, for, for uh, you know, even the boys themselves. I told you guys, I'm not a jerk, and I'm sorry if I may seem like a jerk because I don't want to talk or nothing, you know. But you know, that's just how I am, you know. And, and then I, I went up there, you know, uh, trying to just let it all go, you know, because I have hurt my wife. I'm a jerk sometimes to my kids, you know. And, and I went up there uh, trying, like, all built up. I, I, it was just built up, and I was right here, man. You know, trying to fix things by myself, it's not going to work, you know. And, and, and with this, it, it's just... It's just proof that God is going to finish the work that he has started in us. All right? So, again, guys, I thank all the brothers because you guys show me so much love up there. And I know I kept to myself a lot, too. And, 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 and you guys, every single one of you guys, honestly, you, all you guys came over to me, said hi to me, shook my hand, gave me a hug. Brother, Brother Thomas, I told you, man. I wasn't about that huggy stuff, you know, either, you know, and, uh, but, it, you know, and, and this is another thing that, that, that I got out of uh, there, you know, I, 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 I left there, you know, with, with feeling that, that love of the brotherhood of the family of Christ, you know, it's a different type of love that, that, you know, it ain't blood, you know, but again, I thank all you guys and, and all the brothers, you know, my wife. You know, for pushing me also to go because her, she had a big part, you know, in, in this. You know, my kids were excited for me to go. You know? so, again, guys, thank you and, and um, praise God. Praise God.
There's some <clears throat> profound words from all these uh, men. It's pretty awesome. The, when, I sh uh, when I spoke or shared this morning, I said um, I ran up. That was my secret. Oh, I, I like to go first because I, I want to get it out the way. And then, you know, I don't get the jitters or nothing. And then today, here I am, the last one in life. <laughs> but um, I just want to say... Um, Every time we go to the mountain, there's something different. Um, this year, um, you know, I, I do it for you, my beautiful wife. I do it for you, my beautiful son. And I do it for you, my beautiful daughter. Um, there was something that was kind of wearing heavy, weighing heavy on me um, at the mountain. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but... It's or I've spoke to some of you about it. When it comes time for the mountain trip, uh, some of us make excuses of why we can't go. Uh, something at work, reasons not to go. Let me see what I could come up with this time. So the family, you know, um, they're all going to. Uh, there was a football game last night. You guys all know I'm a big UCLA fan, and uh, that's in my head. I'm thinking about it, and uh, all the while, you know. Um, <laughs> How many of you know that my beautiful daughter blessed me? She paid my, she paid my way to the mountain in advance, you know? Thank you, Isis. Thank you so much. So, you know, leading up, leading up to the trip, you know, I'm, uh, I'm cracking jokes at home and stuff about to the family, like, uh, oh, you guys are going to the game without me, uh, man. And here I am at the mountain thinking, you know, pastor says, uh, when you make jokes and you tell someone like, uh, I was just kidding, but yeah. you're really, you're saying, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyways, um, I thought about it and I want to tell my daughter, like, um, I'm, I'm blessed and I'm thankful that you sent me up there. Forget about the game. <laughs> that, I'm glad you guys had a good time, but all right. And I know it's time for more people to come up. Um, I also just want to say real quick, uh, one thing I got up there was uh, Pastor AJ. I had a word from him. And, uh, you know, when I was l younger, I used to love to write. And I even sometimes used to say I was going to be a writer. And he gave me a, a word that said um, to take time to myself. I think he even said to go on a vacation by myself. That was from Pastor AJ. <laughs> Go on a vacation by yourself and um, take a <laughs> write, uh, study the word and 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 write it and write it down. Um, and uh, that does really sound like something um, I I need to do. Like study the word and um, and actually just how do you say divulge? Like get into it and uh, get something from it. Um, that. That's what I got. And also, one last thing. I was blessed to have my dad go with me this time. <laughs> Frank Sanchez. He's not here. Um, and then, like the other men said, the power of an invite. You know, all these years, he's always been invited by me, by you, brothers. Thank you, Thomas. Some of you always reach out to him. When are we going to see you, Frank? And you know how he is. He'll say, like, oh, maybe one day. And then this year, um, man, if I remember correctly, he told me, Hey, I'm going to go to that mountain trip. You know, I was like, praise God, you know. And very last but not least, and most importantly, he gave his life to the Lord last night. <laughs> I'm back. That was about me. Now, this is what I got out of the mountain. That it's not about me. Because me, I can't do, I can't get through it. It's about what he did for us. What he did for us. Where he ended, we're going to continue. That's the word I got. What is it? Our, our, his ceiling's our floor? That's where we continue going. It's not going to stop there. We got to continue the word through God. Because no matter what we're going through, we always go through scripture. We got to let <clears throat> share the word of God. Let him stop being selfish. Don't be scared to share the word. Don't be scared. Share the word. That's what he, that's what he did, what he did for us. Sacrifice himself for us.
How you guys doing? I'm not good with this mic, so. <clears throat> Just want to share something. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to sing. <laughs> you know, I went, I went this year expecting something new. The word was new. Oh, am I, am I too loud? I wanted something new. I, I know you guys heard me on Thursday when, I, when the Lord gave me that word. Just something new was happening in my life. So I didn't, I didn't really know what to expect. I just know that it was something new. And that was the whole thing that was happening. Something new. But before the Lord gave me something new, there was something that he needed to take away from me. And I didn't know what that was. I had the privilege of having all the youth with me. All the young men. It was beautiful. And then we're sitting and sharing. And one of the questions was, what are you expecting? And I hadn't, I hadn't really thought about that. And as I was going, it just came out. And I said, you know what? There's things within me that I want the Lord to remove from me. Because there's a lot of hurt that I do to my family. You see me? I'm all here for all the men. You call me, I'm there for you. Anytime, I'll, I'll be there for you. I'll do whatever it needs for you to be okay. On the, on the way down here, I was, I was driving with my brother. And I was just sharing, I was sharing, sharing with him about his life. And then we're on the freeway and it got quiet. And he sat there and he goes, he asked me a question. And I said, sure. He said, sure. And he goes, oh, I've been thinking about for 40 minutes to ask you a question, but I was afraid what you were going to answer. He was scared for 40 minutes to see what my response was. And the Lord showed me, you do that to your kids too. See, I don't want to do that to my kids anymore. Just the way I share with Brother Andy in the restaurant right now, I want my family to know that they don't have to be scared to approach me. I'm not going to interrupt you when you speak anymore because I'm quick to interrupt you. I won't let you finish your sentence if I don't agree with you. I want to put on my two cents right away. Hey, no, I don't think so. We're not, that's not going to happen. That's not, see, my kids know I'm not a man of words. I'm a man of action. And I'm telling you, don't be afraid to approach me or ask me anything because if I could do it for any of these men anytime, any day, I should be able to be approachable by you that you're my first priority, my kids, my family, especially my wife. So, so see, I knew God was going to do something new in my life. But he needed to take that away from me because they're going to back me up. They're going to encourage me when I can't. My wife's going to hold my hands up when I can't anymore. When I can't get a hold of any of you, my wife's going to be there to help me out. And I thank God. I thank God for this. Let me just tell you, this year was new, but it was the best one yet. First night seven eight nine i don't know i don't even know how many people gave their lives to the lord but this is what they was all about amen i just want to give god the glory the man you see here i just told, I, I share with you guys already all glory be to god glory of dios all right i don't think i'm supposed to be up here because we're only supposed to do a few but uh I went up there. I was part of the uh, the leadership that organizes it, and it was it was it was fun in the beginning. You know, I've been wanting to do it for a lot of years, but for some reason they didn't want me to do it. So you know, who knows why? But uh, I got to do it this year. It was fun. Um, but as it started getting closer, things started getting harder. Things started happening, and you know, you got home, you got work, you got all these things. You got the church ministry, and and all of that stuff. You know, I started to think like, man. Wouldn't it be easier just to go to another church and sit down? It's hard for me and my wife sometimes. 
We love you guys. That's why we do it. The Lord saved us, and he blessed us to be a blessing, but it ain't easy. And at times, the encourager needs encouragement. And uh, I went up there with that, and Bobby Joe asked me, are you ready? I was like, I don't know, Mom. I'm kind of just going through the motions, you know. And when we got up there, going through the motions, going through the motions, Friday night, they, they allowed me to be on the worship team. We're up there worshiping, and then an altar call happened. You got eight, nine men. And I'm up there, we're worshiping, and we give an altar call. All, anybody, you have never received Jesus, come up. These men start coming up. They get led to the Lord. And right there, the Lord just revealed to me, that's my purpose. I'm not going nowhere. He rejuvenated me. He reinstilled my purpose in me up there. You know, and I wanted to testify on that because... A lot of times when you're, when you're in ministry, whether you're a pastor, whatever you are, even an usher, that ushers every service, you know, and it's like, it gets hard. You got a life. You got kids. You got family. And like my brother right there said, sometimes we put our family in the back. And, uh, yeah, you know, I just thank God for repurposing me. He repurposed me up there. And I thank him for that. So... For any of you that didn't go, you got to go. Every single man that came up here has given you a reason to go. So I encourage you. I love you all. Thank you. I'm going to call up uh, Brother Andy. It's hard, brother. <laughs> I, I, I've laid my, my head on this man's shoulders. <sighs> More times than I can remember. And Andy's always been there for me. He's been there for this ministry. And it's just a blessing to have him here. Him and his wife, Sister Bobby. So, what, what, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and acknowledge Andy, and if you have any words to say, we can do it, but we want to acknowledge him because, like you said, everything was new this year. You know, our spiritual father was not, he was with us in spirit, but he wasn't there. And, Pastor, you know how you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to get into that, but, uh, but Andy, Andy assumed the reins. And he took it over, and you know what? We didn't skip a beat. <laughs> we didn't skip a beat. And you know what? <laughs> we didn't skip a beat. Things happened. There were trials. There were trials. But we overcame. And I, I just want all of us to acknowledge Andy because of the, the great job that he did, brother. Really. Thank you, Andy. What do you want me to say? <laughs> you stay here. Say, say we're, we're both crybabies. <laughs> yeah, we're both crybabies, but we know that. No, um. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it, but after all that, we can <laughs> praise God. Yeah, that's praise God. I, you know, um, uh, uh, yep, yeah, we did praise God. 
Yeah, it was not the norm, as we called it. Uh, just how my, how it, uh, whew, how it, I was better up there, honestly. I really was. <laughs> right? Yeah. You hear that? You ever hear music out of that? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So, that's an inside joke. So, when we started to put the conference together, Thomas was with us this year, and Mr. Fred Mancina was with us this year, baby. Fred, the man that makes it happen. Brother Hugo was with us, and then because of things, hi, Nini. How, how you know, with his father, or his brother and his, you know, his parents, he was, he had to leave. So then it was me, for, and then Pastor Ranger, had, and then he had to be out for a while. So it was me, Thomas, and Fred. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> so, so it was like, so we had more meetings than normal. <laughs> we had a cu- cu- a bu- bunch of calls saying, hey man, what are we going to do? It's like this, this went, this went, and things were going sideways. And then, then I'm like, I started to stress and I'm going, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? What am I, what, how am I going to, how, how, how are we, how am I? And it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Then I got, God said it. How am, am I going to do it? How, am, how is he going to do it? He went, I'm going to take care of it. And I went, oh, praise God. That's right. You're in charge. I forgot. And then I just had this peace come over me. And then it doubled the amount of things that went sideways. <laughs> but each time it was like, oh, no problem. They said, we can't get the t- T-shirts or foul. Yeah, no worry about it. Can't get the badges. Ah, we'll use a pen. Everything was like, so then the more things that went sideways, the more I knew to rely on God. And it got so, we even, speakers were going to drop out. And we're like, I was like, well, all I know is all we have to do is get there, get up there, get the worship team up there, and let it rip. And then God was going to show up. And guess what? That's what he did. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you all. Can I go like this? I tell you, <laughs> we'd like to say what uh, what happens at the mountain stays at the mountain, but obviously, you see, it, we just can't. Obviously, it didn't, uh, but it was, it was, uh, uh, I don't like the word turmoil, but there was a lot of obstacles that uh, we had to face. One way to think, Thomas said it, was the reason I do what I do and we do what we do is for all those testimonies, right? Amen, amen. That's what it's all about. It's That's, right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, it is. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just say for, for myself, I, I always go expecting, but it's the same, the same way. Uh, I, just, I just know that God's going to show up. And I know that I know that I know that he's going to have something for me. I just know that. And uh, sometimes it is... Uh, a bit of a sacrifice or maybe an inconvenience or, you know, as some of the brothers said, you look for an excuse not to go or, or I just can't do it this year, whatever, whatever the reason is. But God finds a way. God finds a way. And he found a way for me to get up through this year. And I just want to thank the brothers for that. But what God did for me God gave me a cleansing. <sighs> and I just poured out so much stuff, so much stuff. And I just want to thank him for that because sometimes we bury stuff 
in us, and we forget about it. You know, we, we just put it on the back burner, and we think it's going to go away. But it doesn't, because it will reveal itself down the road somewhere. And he did, uh, the word that I'm looking for is a purging. He purged me. That's what he did. He purged me. And when I, when, when I went to my knees and I just couldn't get up and, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's just, I couldn't get up, uh, you know. But uh, I just thank God for the good work that's begun in me because I know he's going to complete it and he's going to finish it, you know. And, and that was all just part of it, you know. So I just thank him for that, for the purging that he did to me. And as, as, as we all know and we all say, you know, he can't give in to us if we don't release what's in us. You know, I can't receive anything like this. I can't receive anything. But as soon as I open that palm and I surrender and I let his will be done in my life, he pours more into me. And, and like I said, but he purged me. And what he pours into us, we need to release it. We need to release it. He, doesn't, he didn't save us, you know, just to save us. He saved us for a purpose, for a reason. And that's that his word would continue to go forward. You know, I think we said it before here. The enemy... He's not concerned with, with, with some people because he knows he's already got them. But what he's concerned with, and even some Christians, I'm going to say that, even some Christians. But what he's concerned with is when you start to believe it, you start to walk in it, and you start to go forward, and you start to tell people about it. That's what he doesn't want. You know? And... We're not ignorant to the enemy's devices in the ploys that he uses. He's been doing this for millennials. We need to be wise. We need to be wise. And we need to have God's word. Because that's the biggest weapon that we have. Is the word. Is the word. And you have to have that in you. Uh, as pastor says, we... We've got a little bit of, a few minutes. Give me that first passage, Miha, please. Um, pastor's always said he doesn't like to leave without giving something. And we have a, a, a few minutes here. I had, I knew I was going to speak today, and I had a message prepared. <laughs> but God had another plan. <laughs> God had another plan. And I, 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 I know that he's been working on this for about a month now. Because if you go back and listen to the sermons that we've heard, what's been given to us over this pulpit, everything was preparing us for this time, you know, to be prepared to get ready. And this is uh, Hebrews 3.14. It says, <clears throat> For we have become partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast, which is what our, what our mother was, it wasn't endure, <laughs> it wasn't persevere, it was steadfast. If we hold steadfast to the end, and we know there's going to be issues, we're going to, you know, we're going to go up, we're going to go down, because some of us run on our emotions, we're going to go sideways, but we have to hold steadfast, and what he's telling us here. If you become a partaker of Christ, that means we have to allow his will to be done in our lives. You know? Because a lot of times we come and we say, Lord, bless this. But you know what? That's not for you. That's not for you. And we have to know what God's will is for our lives. It says, beginning, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. When we came to the Lord... Raise my hand. We was jumping for joy. We was glad. We was out wanting to tell people about it. You know, I remember me on Saturday night, I'd pull my clothes out, getting ready, make sure my shoes are nice and polished, you know. Do we still have that? That that you felt in the beginning, when you first were saved, do you still have that in you? Do you still have that energy, that gusto? That I want to go to church. You know, not, well, 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to say the Raiders, and, you know, Raiders ain't playing no football. But, you know, but, you know, but there's, there's a football game on, you know. Or, or I get that call. And me, so I lose my, my, my nephews, and deal. I got some Laker tickets. <clears throat> Am I steadfast? Am I steadfast? Or do I say, well, you know what? I may not get these seats again, so I, I think I'll go see the Lakers. I'll go see the Raiders. No, no. Where's that joy? Where's that gusto that God put in you? Like I said, and, and it was there when we first started. I remember years and years ago, I wanted to go to the parks. I wanted to go to the parks and just holler out and let people know, hey, there's only one way. And that's his way. You know what? And the last, I don't know how many years, but where's that gusto at now? Where's that energy? Where's that drive? That desire to go out and let people know about our Savior and what he's done for you. Because each of us have our own testimonies, okay? This is First Peter 5, 9. And we talked about a lot of, a lot of about this uh, up at the mountain. And uh, Brother Eric gave us some Friday night. He, 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 he started it off. Because right. right. I'll tell you what, Friday night, man, you just felt the, the Holy Spirit. And it was just coming down on everybody. And, it, it, uh, you know, there's no other ways to put it. But just awesome. We serve an awesome God. Yeah. We serve an awesome God. And he gave us that. Four downs. So we've got four more downs. We're going to keep moving forward. And stone wall. You know, we're going to build a wall, and that enemy is not going to penetrate. That enemy is not going to come into our encampment. That enemy is not going to come into my home. He's not, he's got no place there. And, and, and I'll tell you what, uh, uh, part of this, we all know that Pastor Angel had the surgery. Praise God, he's doing well. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> right, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. I was under the weather for probably about three weeks now, and praise God, I, I was even like, you know, and Andy talk, called me a couple times, Brother Tomas, and, you know, our, uh, Brother Fred, are, are you going to go up? And <coughs> at one point, I just said, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to go up. I couldn't get rid of this darn cough, you know? And then with Pastor Angel having the surgery and stuff, you know, that was a, a damper on it. And then I got some news uh, one of my cousins, he's got cancer, and it's pretty, pretty bad. It's the liver, and I'm, now I'm starting to get weak. I'm starting to get weak because my knees are starting to shake, and I'm starting to say, well, you know what? Maybe I just need to stay home. Maybe I just need to stay home. And I'll tell you, that little sliver that I left open, the enemy came into my home. The enemy was in my house. I was up one night. I was laying in bed, you know, because I'd just been sick. And I get up, and our, our, we have our bedroom, and then we have, like, a little, little walkway with uh, closets on each side. And then you go into the shower and stuff here. But anyways, I get up to go to the bathroom, and I'm walking. And as I'm walking, and I heard it clear as day because I know my God's voice. I know Jesus' voice. And someone was laughing at me. And it was an ugly laugh. I mean, it was an ugly laugh, and I knew it was the enemy. But I stopped, and I, I, I stopped, and I looked. I moved some things around because my grandson has, he's got a couple of toys that if you move them, you know, they, 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 they do whatever. He's got a big dinosaur, and he's got some other stuff. And I, you know, and I, and the, I thought, and I said, well, what would that be doing in the closet? You know. But I, so I stopped, and I looked, and as soon as I realized... I said, you know what, enemy? You got no place in this house. I said, you need to leave right now because the blood of Jesus covers this house. The Holy Spirit permeates every nook and cranny. I said, with the authority of Jesus Christ, you need to leave. He was gone. He was gone. So the enemy was working overtime to get to me. You know? But I knew, I recognized it. That it was not our Lord and Savior. And we have to be aware of that. And that's what I teach our, 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 our young children in, in the class. I said, the enemy is not going to come at you with horns and a tail and a pitchfork. He's not going to come that way. He could be someone that you may think is your friend in school. 
I said, because they're going to come after you. Because you profess you're a Christian, they're going to come after you. And that's what we try and do. We try and make them strong in the word so that when something does come up, they profess the word. Not, not their feelings, not their emotions, not what the world is telling them, but what Jesus Christ's word says. You know? And that's what we need to do with our youth and with our children. Let me uh, get on here. Uh, 1 Peter 5.9 says, Resist him, steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by brotherhood in the world. I got this today. God gave me this today, this morning. Like I said, he was just purging me. And uh, I, just releasing stuff out of me. And I, I, I think I shared with a couple, of the, a couple men up there. <clears throat> you know, we all suffer in some form or another. We've all got issues that we need to deal with. You know, so when the enemy comes, don't go into that pity party. Oh, it's just me. Why me, Lord? How come me again? No, 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 no. Say, you know what, Father? What are you teaching me through this? Because a lot of times, what do you want to say? Lord, get me out of here. Get me out. I don't want to be there. But you know what? In that secret place, in that pit that sometimes we're in, that's when he's doing his work. Because then we're learning to trust on him. We don't trust in ourselves. We don't trust in our emotions. We trust on the Lord. And that's what we need to do. You know, we need to just know that, you know, we're not going through that by ourselves. And we don't go through it by ourselves because, you know, there's a brotherhood here. And, and the, men, the men know that. And, and, and I've, you know, I've, I've given my number out because I, I just want them to know we're here. And we're here for you. We're here for you. you know? And that's the way we need to be. Genesis 39.10. You all know the story of Joseph and uh, kind of what he went through. And, you know, uh, they sold him into slavery. He was thrown in a pit. And they went to Potiphar's house. And, uh, you know, but God was always with him. Always with him. Uh, but this is what, what I wanted to get to. It says, so it was, as she spoke to Joseph, here it is, day by day. He did not heed her. And that's how the enemy is. The enemy is relentless. He's going to come after you, and he's going to wear you down if you allow him to, you know. And it, it may not necessarily be a woman or a man, but it could be that anger. It could be that frustration, you know. It could be the video games, as the brothers have testified here. You know, am I the same in my home as I am at church, you know what? Because sometimes we get so busy in ministry and we forget about who we're serving. You know? And we're first here for God, for Christ. But we can get so wrapped up in it. And she was relentless. She didn't give up. This is a woman. This is a human being. And if she's that way, you know that the enemy is twice, three, four, five thousand times stronger. This is all he knows, is lies. He's the father of lies. And he's going to come after you. The thing is, and he's going to come after you in any shape, way, or form to get to you. You know what? Don't get mad at your wives. Don't get mad at your children. Because they're not the enemies. They're not the enemies. They're being used, being manipulated by the enemy to get to you. But like I said, we're not ignorant to that. And we need to know, no, it's not, it's not her. It's not him. It's not my children. You know what? You have to see beyond that, and you have to look up, because where does my help come from? My help comes from above. You know? And just know, just know, because you know that you know to, to get that. I've got one more scripture here. James 4, 7. It says, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Or, or, excuse me, does that say, therefore, submit some things to God? Does it say some things? No. It said submit. That means I, I submit my spirit. I submit my soul. I submit my finances. I submit my family, my wife, to God. 
to God. And as we do that, he'll take care of you. He'll bless you. You know what? And the enemy will flee. Now, we just don't, and we, we submit. That means we're in prayer. We're in worship. We're in our secret place. And we're sharing the love that God has given us. Amen. You know, it's just not that I submit and, okay, Lord, do what you got to do. And there may come a time and place that maybe will God put you there. Because sometimes, like Pastor says, man, we're God's on us. We're stubborn, you know. And sometimes he will put us. You know, we, we used to say back a, a while back, said, sometimes God will allow you to fall on your back because now you've only got one way to look. And that's up. You know what? So, you know, and, and the same way, give him, submit your envy. Sometimes we get a little bit big-headed because, you know, we're doing well, we're doing good, things are going fine. But you know what? It's all God's work in us. It's all God's work in us, what he's doing through us and to get to someone else. And we need to understand that total submission. It doesn't say submit something. It says submit. And when you submit, God is going to bless you. Because like we say, God can't bless no mess. You know, we, were, we got some good words up there, and we talk about maybe relationships up there and stuff and whatnot. And, you know, people ask for blessings and stuff and whatnot. Well, you know what? If I'm living a certain way or I'm doing certain things, things that I know are not right or not, you know, what, the way that God has intended it to be, how's he going to bless me? How's he going to bless that? God would not bless the mess. And he's just not. He's true to his word. He's true to his word. And we can't pick and choose what we want out of there. We have to submit completely. From Genesis to Revelation. I just can't say, well, I like this scripture, so I'm going to stand on that. Well, no. What about all the other ones? Yeah. But uh, stay strong. Amen. Thank you all for, for coming out. And thank the men for going to uh, uh, the mountain. And like I said, we look forward to it next year. And we'd like to ask our first-time visitors if we could go ahead, if you raise your hand for me, and we could go ahead and give you a... a an information card, and we're not going to sell your information, you know, but we'll use it, and we'll put it on file, and as things come up, we have men's meeting every first Saturday, we have women's meeting every second, every second Saturday, and we always have something going on at Turning Point. So that's all it's for, is just keep you informed, and keep it going. Uh, yeah. And once again, we'd just like to remind you, no service Thursday. Uh, I, told, uh, I, t I told a brother earlier, uh, I said, well, I said, you know, you can, come, you can come on Thursday and maybe you'll be the turkey, you know. <laughs> no, but no, <laughs> no service. <laughs> no service on Thursday. <laughs> As you can tell, we love to have fun. That's the joy of the Lord. That's the joy of the Lord. All right. But uh, let's go ahead and close out before, uh, before we leave. Say, Father, we just thank you, Father. We just thank you once again, Lord, for the good works that you've begun in each and every one of us, Father, that uh, as we went up to the mountain expecting, Father, that you went ahead and supplied every one of our needs, Father. Whatever it was that we were looking for, Father, you were ready because your word says, Father, that before we even ask, you know what it is, Father. So we thank you for that right now, Father. We just thank you for travel mercies, for coming and going, Father. We just pray for our pastor, Lord, that you just continue to... To, to heal him, Father, and we, we call him healed in Jesus' name because that's what your word says, that you bore the stripes of Calvary, that he would have healing, Father. And we just say that, you know, those arteries are cleared up, Father, that he will be walking and talking, Father, and sharing, Lord, and we expect him back sooner probably than what anybody would believe or think, Father. Father, we just thank you once again for the good works that you're doing in all of us. We thank you for the men that will come up uh, 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 and give their testimony, Father, because without a test, we can't have a testimony, Lord. And we just thank you for their, their courage, Father, for their obedience in doing what it is that they do, Father. That they are submitted to you, Father, and we look forward to seeing you Again, Lord, we look forward to seeing you face to face, Father, because that's your promise to us, Lord. And we just thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. And the whole church said. Amen.